Good evening. God bless you. Praise God. How are you, everyone? My name is Henry Falcon from Flame of Fire Ministries. Welcome to this Colorado Convergence Recap. I'm just checking to make sure we get everybody on and that we're on. We are actually on, so let's make sure we are. Yep, there we are. Beautiful. Okay. Praise God. I can shut the volume down on that so I can write your comments. Hey, man, it's nice to be back, back home. And uh, But boy, brothers and sisters, what an incredible journey in Colorado. I can't even give you words to describe what the Lord uh, did in Colorado. And uh, he said that he was going to meet us there as the King of glory and reveal himself. He has absolutely revealed himself as the King of glory. Praise God. Now, if those of you that were at the convergence that are able to come on tonight, um, please uh, sign in. If you're watching, please sign in and on, on that link I gave you. And when I see your picture come up, I'll know you're there. So if you have any problems doing that, then um, hopefully um, I can give you instructions or you can text me if you need to, just to let me know that you're having difficulties getting on. But it should be pretty simple if you follow the instructions. Tonight, I pray that, you know, uh, there's a few people that will be able to come on and share a little bit about, you know, the convergence and what's happened to them after the convergence, you know, which is really important. And um, so we're looking forward to, to see who's going to join us tonight and to hear about exactly what a divine convergence is and what the Lord did with them. So Lord, I just thank you right now and I praise you and I bless you, bless you, Lord, for your goodness. We so appreciate you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to use this broadcast as you will. Lord, bring those that need to be on here that you desire to be on this broadcast to hear what you have to say to us, Lord. Let them find this broadcast. Let them find the Facebook or the Ustream, Lord. And Lord, draw them. Draw those who you want, Lord. Draw those that you desire, Lord, to come and be with us tonight and to be with you, Lord. And Father, I just pray, Lord, right now, Lord, that, that we love you and appreciate you so much. You are so good. You're so beautiful, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for not only what you did, but what you're doing. Lord, we're not stopping just because of convergence has ended, Lord, but we're moving forward in you, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you. We bless you tonight, Lord. And we give you praise and honor, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for being with us tonight. We pray, Lord, that you come and manifest your glory, that people will taste you while they're on this broadcast. They'll see you, Lord, and that what you did in Colorado, that Lord, that you would release even now on this broadcast to those that are hungering and thirsting for you, Lord. So, Father, I thank you, I bless you, I praise you, and I give you all the glory right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So, if you haven't signed in yet, please sign in and let us know that you're on and where you're from. And because I can't see who's on right at the present moment, if anybody signed in yet. But um, hopefully everything is working properly. There's at least a few people that have signed in. And uh, would you just uh, type in on the chat line, let us know you're there and where you're from. And uh, if you are a part of the Convergence, uh, you have to follow the link. There we go. Amen. We got uh, Amber and, and 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 Jared on. And so I'm going to put them on in just a little while. Praise God. And uh, so um, thank you for watching tonight. And uh, please just take a minute, everybody. Sign in. Let us know where you're from so we can welcome you. And uh, my chat line is not working. So if anybody has the opportunity to chat, just write hi. There we go. There Now it's working. Okay. Ah, Gloria's on. Amen. Uh, hello, Gloria. Listen, I don't know if you got the link tonight or not, but if you want to share uh, with us, um, I, I sent out a link. You should have had it either from Lynn or me so that you can, like you did last time, that you can sign in and you can share a little bit from the convergence. So if you want to, if you don't want to, that's fine. But uh, just check check it out, uh, you know, check your emails to see. And um, it should be pretty easy to get on. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. Gloria was at the Convergence, and tonight we have Jared and Amber uh, from Texas on the Convergence, which is awesome. Amen. Wanda is here tonight. Praise God. Wanda's joining us. Hello, Sister Wanda. Praise God. Uh, Brother Jared and uh, Sister Amber, these are the prayer warriors I was talking about that were praying for us from from um, from Philly. You'll love them. I, I told them, Wanda, all about you, ladies. And, uh, you know, so uh, I know they love you already <laughs> and you'll love them because they they are beautiful, uh, beautiful people uh, and on both sides. So I can't thank everyone enough for your prayers. Sonia, this that the other part of our Philly five group there. She's another sister that was uh, a blessing 
that, uh, that, that prayed for us. And sisters, your prayers really mattered. And wait till you hear the testimonies tonight to see what God has done, you know, before and after. So uh, tonight we're going to share a little bit about, um, about the convergence and its purposes. And I'm going to add on now, um, uh, Jared and there we go, hey. Jared and Amber. And if Hello. anybody that's at the convergence want to sign in, please just follow the link and I can put you on the screen. I can put up to 10 people on. Amen. So praise God. Listen, if you would, could you just say hello to Wanda and Sonia and those that are watching? Brother and sister, say hello to everybody. Hello. Hello, Wanda. Hello, Sonia. We so appreciate you both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know your prayers. We're the fruit of your prayers. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Amen. Hello, everybody else. <laughs> Everybody else that's going to be watching tonight and we'll watch because what happens is this broadcast like, a, you know, be posted on an open heaven. Then people come to watch it later and then it'll be on, on uh, you know, um, Voice of Prophecy and different links that I'm kind of connected with. So uh, there'll be others that will be watching. But tonight we want to share, um, um, you know, a little bit about the convergence, about what the Lord did. And the Lord told me to come to Colorado to meet him in the mountains, to meet him as the king of glory that he was going to reveal himself as the king of glory. And I think those that came would absolutely say that's exactly how he revealed himself to us. But most of you have heard me a lot sharing about, about it and teaching about it. But tonight, it's better to hear from those who actually experienced it and why this is so different, why this is, a, 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 I believe, a kingdom work of God being able to gather his body together, function together, serve together, love together, and meet the Lord. And it's a completely different dynamic than, you know, what we're used to in the church service. And again, no disrespect to services or conferences, but it really is a truly encounter with the Lord in a, in, in his tent of meeting. So um, praise God. So I'm going to uh, just go over to Jared and to, to Amber. And I got to pre meet them and they came all the way up from, uh, uh, I want to say Fort Walton, no. Um, Fort Worth. Uh, Fort Worth, yeah. Fort Walton's my area. Fort Worth, Texas. Amen. So it's a pleasure to, to have you on tonight and uh, and maybe to share your experiences with, uh, you know, especially you young people that are watching tonight. They're a young couple in the Lord on fire for God, you know, and it really, I, I don't know about you, it's, it's also, we get so encouraged by you by your fire and your zeal and your absolute reckless abandonment for God. It's just contagious. It fuels the fire in me. So we so appreciate when, when God would, would bring, bring your generation into it, together with us and us with you. So welcome and God bless you. Thank you for joining tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Henry for having us on. We're happy, we're happy to share. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So, um, Tonight, what, what it, uh, I'm going to let you just share whatever you want to share, what you think is important, okay, of what, what you experienced and all those things. So I'll, I'll try to back off and just let you guys you know, share from your hearts, uh, whatever it is on your heart that you want to share that would encourage God's people, pastors, leaders, Bible ministries, the body of Christ, whatever God gives you. All right. <laughs> well, the first thing that just is on my heart right now is to just talk about the experience that both Jared and I had of the pure, holy love of God while we were at the Convergence. Um, when we came into the, to the very first session, it was a time of personal ministry to the Lord where individuals could sit with him and seek his face, um, which is something I've been hungry for for a long time. Um, and I encountered him in that first session, pure, holy love of God, um, in a way that I'd never experienced him before. And after that first session, I thought to myself, wow, you know, that's it. That's all that's going to happen. It was the first session and then that's it. No, every single time we sought the face of the Lord individually and together, God showed himself to be greater, his love to be deeper and wider than I could ever know. And now all I am is hungry for more. Um, and the, the pure, holy love of God that I experience is truly a consuming fire where I came into the convergence with fear and anxiety that held on to my heart and my mind for a long time in my life. I I'd, I'd prayed about it. I'd been to counseling for it. 
And I am testifying today that I have such a peace that I have never known. I don't think since I've been on this earth, I have such a freedom and, um, Jared too, we were just, um, just talking about the freedom that it's, it's almost, it's almost strange to be walking around in such freedom that we've never known. And it's only the pure and holy love of God encountering us as individuals in our hearts that can, that can do that kind of work. So, um, I, that's just the first thing I want to celebrate because that's just on my heart right now that, um, I encountered his love. Like I've never encountered it before not just one time it felt like every minute every second i was experiencing more of him directly um so it was it was really beautiful i just got to say right now i i just feel like an eagle that that's how i felt i just feel so free I feel um it, it's hard to explain honestly God, I'm just amazed at how how big God really is, mm -hmm. and He just um, the whole entire weekend, and and since we've gotten back, uh, God just continually just shows Himself to be bigger and better and more glorious to me, and I'm seeing Him. I'm, I may be able to see Him more because uh, we are gathering together in the presence of God, and so when we're because we're all together in the presence of God, we're able to to share our encounters with him. And so through that, I've, I've got so much more real to me mm -hmm. than before this convergence. That's, that's what I'm feeling right now. I'm, I'm feeling yeah. so light. Um, it, it almost doesn't feel, feel right. Cause it, it, there's just so much freedom that I feel in the Lord. Uh, yeah. I feel like such a son of God. Mm. I would say that's, a, that's a huge marker maybe of, of, a difference between uh, maybe a typical church service and what we experienced at the convergence was maybe in a church service, there's moments that you might encounter, um, encounter God. There's, there's maybe small moments, maybe in at the beginning of the service when you're worshiping, or, or maybe there's something in the teaching that grabs your heart and shows you a different facet of God. But um, when we were, when, when we were in Colorado this weekend, the entire weekend was saturated with the presence of God. So the time wasn't marked by a teacher or a person. It was marked by the presence of God. And Jared and I were actually just recalling, writing down today, just the different testimonies from our brothers and sisters who were there. And it was amazing because as we were recalling what people had shared, every single one was I encountered the love of God in a deeper way. I encounter, you know, he he was calling me back to himself. I mean, so it what it's not just like Jared and I are some kind of special case that mm -hmm. it was everyone there testified that they were marked in a new way by the love of God. And and that is something um at times at maybe a conference or a typical church service that there's maybe a few people that you feel like, oh, I wish I could be experiencing what they're experiencing or, um, but no, God, when when he is held up as, um, as the king of glory, as he was this weekend, he truly marked each individual there. So, mm. incredible. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanna make a comment about the presence of God there. Uh, there's this one time and I was with the Lord and just worshiping him and just receiving his love. And, and he just struck me and I just, I just gave him my heart and then he gave me his heart. Mm -hmm. And then we had another exchange where I was like, okay, God, my heart is yours. And he gave me his heart and just this, uh, this, this union together. And I just felt his eternal love and his, his eternal protection. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in the fire of his presence, mm. um, I, I just I just felt this eternity. I saw this eternity with God. It was it, it's hard hard to explain, but his presence met me there in a way that I've never been met anywhere else. Um, yeah, I just can't remark enough how free I feel <laughs> in, in in the fire of his love. Wow, that's beautiful. What do you think? Why is a convergence difference of difference? And why do you think this is something that the Lord 
is really trying to transition us from where we've been to where we are. Why is this kind of an important step? What is different to you about, um, you know, about coming together, about the uh, the style of worship and all the all the things that maybe allowed that to happen? How would you how would you explain that or describe that to everyone? Um, I think the one of the greatest markers for me of difference is the amount of space that's made both for the Lord and for every individual there. And, and what I mean by space is that um, there wasn't one person holding the space for the room. There wasn't one person at the front who was teaching and the rest of us were sitting and taking notes. Now there was teaching at times, but overall, um, there was not one person up front teaching with an audience taking notes. And so during, and also there wasn't necessarily a worship team up front um, with people following the worship team. So in that space that was created, um, we could worship the Lord in freedom. So there was room, there was, there was literal physical space in the room for us to dance for us to pick up flags as we felt led. Um, there, was, um, there was spiritual space for those to sing who wanted to sing, for those to minister to the Lord in thanksgiving out loud. And um, I felt so free that there was no time constraint. Um, that was another beautiful, beautiful um, area of, of space that was allowed. There, there, it didn't, there wasn't a time constraint. So if if we were worshiping for three hours and that's how our hearts were, were feeling led, that's what was happening. Um, so the Holy Spirit had so much space to move and that gives each person and each individual freedom to express themselves to the Lord, however their heart is coming forth. And the beautiful thing about that is then um, there is a unity when each person is expressing themselves as they're being led by the Spirit. And um, so then, you know, it's, it's beautiful as we're worshiping the Lord as individuals and then Holy Spirit kind of leads us back together where we're able to share what we were experiencing individually. And it is like nothing else to see the way that the Lord weaves those different individual pieces together as we begin sharing what each part of the body was experiencing and hearing from God. And all of a sudden, um, you have this substance of the voice of God that comes forth in the room. And you're, you're looking at your brothers and sisters. And it, it's almost like in, in the personal individual time, we were all surrounding Jesus, seeing different sides of him, experiencing different sides of him. And then we kind of come down from the glory or we're still in the glory and we're talking about all these different sides of him that we were seeing. And um, just the the unity of of the of the teaching is incredible to see the Lord weave together the individual revelation, um, but then it's it's also amazing to then experience just the unity of heart that we're knitted together as as Henry has has said that we become a knitted together people. We might not know each other um, very well, but there's this deep affection and love for one another that only the Lord Jesus, only under his headship, can we experience that kind of unity. Um, so I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, to respond to what you said about the fivefold ministry and the, uh, uh, the unique experience What's so neat about a convergence is when we come together, we can all edify one another. We can share our experience with God. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, uh, just seeing how God is so much more real than I than I perceived Him. Uh, when our brothers and sisters can share, just just sharing the testimony of His love and and the fire mm -hmm. of His presence is so powerful. And, and so walking away with that is. It's so critical to 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 be surrounded in the reality of God. Uh, with that, talking about the fivefold ministry, um, something that 
was just so so profound for me was uh, I learned more the voice of God because uh, when you Pastor Henry when we were when we were sharing what what uh, we felt what what we were experiencing the time of worshiping God and receiving His love um, something that I might have seen as insignificant or uh, barely worth sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times you were able to affirm uh, the voice of God in me. And, and through that, I learned that um, the seemingly insignificant things were actually really big things. And they really spoke boldly to my heart of his love. Mm -hmm. And so with the fivefold ministry, I think it's a really powerful opportunity to uh, minister more, even more accurately to mm. the saints. Wow. And, and teaching them the voice of God, how each yes. individual needs to see that. It needs to see his voice. I'm sorry. Um, there's such an expansion with the fivefold ministry when we can all come together. Uh, nobody's more important than the other. We're all, we're all sons of God. Um, However, there are there are those of Fightful Ministry that they have they have a gift to share with the body, and so we can come together and strengthen one another. Um, so I see it as um, um, as a calling to the Fightful Ministry myself that it is more of an opportunity to minister than if I was just on a stage or on a podium. Um, sharing for half an hour to 45 minutes of what God's been showing me. Um, I like it so much more that I get to minister to others, you know, hearing their, hearing God's voice through them. And um, I can imagine just being, just everybody just strengthened in that in, in the unique sharing of God's voice because God has many different things he wants to say and, and he wants to be heard through every saint. Yes. And so yeah. um, I, I've, I've been in services before where I've, where we've talked about the message afterward and I've heard people say multiple times, like, you know, I got this part, but I, I wasn't really tracking with, with these parts. And that's, that's always kind of grieved me. Mm -hmm. And there's been times where I just like, you know, like, oh, let's just, let's just talk about it, you know, for, for a while. But when you come into a convergence, um, everything's addressed. Mm -hmm. and so we all just come together. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to testify too to the fact that I know if you're anything like us, I'm not sure who's watching, but um, at times it can be a struggle to hear the voice of God, to know what he's saying to you, or, you know, that's been a journey for Jared and I. And even just before the convergence, I mean, that was something Jared had such a desire to hear God more and to know that it was his voice, not to have those doubts and questions about, was that me? Was that the funny thing I ate last night for dinner? You know, was <laughs> that, what, what's going on there? Um, so when we can come together as the body and have his voice inside of us confirmed, I mean, I sat down today in my journal and you can see the, all of the notes that I was taking today from what I was hearing God more clearly because my brothers and sisters this weekend were able to confirm the voice of him in me and through me. And that's, that's so special. And once again, then you become more connected to those brothers and sisters who are affirming you, who are edifying you, who are affirming your place in the body that no, you're not crazy. You really do have something to say. <laughs> um, so it's, it's so beautiful because I, I assume, I mean, I, I would think that it would grieve the heart of God that his children would question his voice. And so I assume it, it brings him much pleasure when, when his voice can be confirmed that, yes, my daughter, yes, my son, you really are hearing me. Um, and that, that's what the convergence gave us, like a, a confidence that we do hear the voice of God and he speaks so personally to us. So that's beautiful too. <laughs> I just want to add one more thing. Uh, what I see about the convergence is that um, how important is it to come into the presence of the Lord and how important is it to be taught as well, be taught the instruction of the, of the word. In a convergence, when we come together as a body, his presence is, is there that much stronger and uh, he speaks so acutely to each of us. And so he's also 
So he's revealing things to each one of us. So we have the teaching and we also have the fivefold ministry they're teaching. And then we're also there coming together, gathering in his presence. It's so much more powerful than in a traditional church service um, where we just have one speaker most of the time. And yes, there is worship, but uh, man, coming together and worshiping God together and then sharing our experiences with him. Uh, it's, so much more powerful in my experience of mm. encountering him. I think that was a testimony of most of the people that were there. And that's why I want to encourage my FIFO ministry brothers and sisters is that when we can step back and get out of the way and make the Lord, the only agenda, his mm. heart we're seeking. And when everybody is doing that and we, whether we just play instrumental music in the background and everyone gets alone with the Lord, I think God really loves that because all the attention is on him. It's not about hearing a message. It's not about getting healed. It's not about getting delivered. It's about him. We get all of those things as a result, but the pursuit is God. And when we're pursuing just God, it's like it changes the whole atmosphere. And I know many of my pastor friends and apostles and prophets and teachers, they want, they believe, and rightly so, that God wants to change the atmosphere over cities and towns and regions. And that can happen when this, when this type of, of worship and seeking of God is able, because what happens is that pure worship goes up into the heaven and it dispels and it displaces the powers and principalities over those areas. And we begin to operate in an open heaven. And in an open heaven, we can hear him, we can see him, we can minister. And I think, I, I think one of the testimonies from everyone was that they said, you know, when we go to church and thank God for the church, I learned so much in the church. So let me get that out of the way right away. I Absolutely. grew up in church. I got saved in church, got baptized in the Holy Spirit in church, got equipped ministry in church, and I'm grateful for it. But this is greater. We're in a new day. This is a new place in God. It's a new wine skin. And as good as that was, this is much deeper. And it's much better. And I and, and the last point I want to say on that is that what, what what this enables us to be able to do in that worship atmosphere is to hear God. And what everyone said is, I'm not just sitting in a pew. I'm not just sitting there. All of a sudden, it's like you get unburied. You know, that which you are. You know, and, and if you think about it, even though we're going to church and we're getting the messages every week, we're kind of buried by them, if you think about it. You know, we're buried by it because we take good notes and then we have to go home and try to apply those things, but it doesn't connect us. It doesn't, it doesn't connect us. It doesn't interconnect us and like what we're experiencing here, nor does it build up the body and love because you can't participate. How many people said this? It's like, wow, I have a place. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And the beautiful thing about, um, my experience in the church structure, um, it, it really, I experienced a lot of fear that I actually wasn't going to have a place um, because it seemed like there were few positions, you know, few positions within the structure. And so then as a congregant, you know, there's only, there might be in some churches, 3000 people attending the church. And there's maybe, I'm, I'm just throwing out a number here, 300 positions or 200 positions. So that ba by basic math suggests that there's not a place for everyone um, within God's body. There's just not, you know, there's not a job for everyone. There's not a way for us to, to serve him in, in love. And um, I have such a heart to serve the Lord. And there was so much fear in me and that fear creates striving and it creates competition it creates mm. pride it creates that mm. egotistical vying for that place you know yeah. mm. and this weekend at the convergence uh, that's the revelation i received is that there's not only a place for me but there's a place for everyone that that his pure holy love he's such a good father he has a place for every child and it, and, and that place does not shrink them. When somebody, when one person takes their place, that doesn't take away somebody else's place, you know? And, and um, that has been so freeing for me to, to be rid of that fear. What a good father we have that he wouldn't um, put us in, in a family where we have to strive against one another, but we can actually come together in such beautiful unity where I can celebrate my brothers and sisters. And um, in the in the church age, 
structure, that was something that I tried to do in my flesh. I tried wow. to celebrate my brothers and sisters, but at the end of the day, at the bottom of my heart, I was still jealous because I was afraid that there wasn't a place for me. I didn't have that peace and that rest and that assurance from my heavenly father that Amber, my daughter, you do have a place and it's a beautiful place I've prepared just for you. And when, when you know, your sister, or your brother takes their place, um, you know, that, that doesn't, that's their place. And so the beautiful thing about the body coming together in this way is that um, competition naturally has to leave. Yeah. Jealousy has to leave. Yeah. I, I'm not fighting jealousy anymore after yeah. this weekend because I'm so assured that my father has a place for me yeah. and it's a significant place. We're all longing for significance and the father doesn't leave anyone out. Yeah. He has a significant, powerful place for each part of his body. Yeah. And when we come together like this, all I can do is celebrate my brothers and sisters because I'm just like, wow, God, look at you. Look at you, yeah. Lord, in my brothers and sisters. And what a beautiful heavenly family. Like, yeah. isn't that all, isn't that what we want? You know, there, there's a lot of churches seeking unity. They're seeking mm. that family, that family um, feel, you know, that family experience. But unfortunately, as I just kind of testified, my experience in the church structure is that that structure, not the people within it, but the structure, yeah. um, unfortunately, presses us into that place of fear. And so um, we're not resting in the love of God. So it, it's, um, yeah, in, in this, in this, you know, new way of gathering, all of those, all of those tactics of the enemy that come to steal, kill and destroy our unity, just naturally have to get out because the pure and holy love of God casts out all of that fear, mm. because we have that revelation of him as a good father. And um, yeah, I, that's such a freedom for me because if, um, if, if any of you out there have, have seen jealousy in your heart, it is not fun. It is not fun to see that, to see that in your heart. And um, the pure holy love of God casts it out and, and we meet, we meet him there at, at these gatherings. So. Would, would you would you agree that one of the things in, you know in, is that like John the Baptist we decrease and the Lord increases and because we're decreasing by seeking him and putting him first and we're all doing the same work together of loving the Lord there's no competition there's no strife there's no ambition it can't even exist there because of the, of his glory and all of a sudden because we're loving on the lord god is opening up our eyes and we see each other differently don't we we hear each yes. other differently and the instantaneous love i mean i just met you guys and i shared with you i said man i it's like i've known you all my life and 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 you know and even some of the brothers and sisters that we met there that i some of them i met on on facebook but but now that i met them in person the love is incredible. It's true love, isn't it? And true unity. It is. It is. It's true love. I've never experienced anything like it. Yeah, we, we were just children there uh, loving our father. Just uh, the king of glory was the star of the show. <laughs> we, were, we were just enjoying him, receiving his love and um, loving him. And and out of that become comes a great abundant love for your other brothers and sisters. Mm. Yeah. And would you agree that, that we were able to labor together? It says each part supplying what the other needs. It says God arranges the body parts as he wills. So he knows where to place us. And each part supplies what the other needs. And, you know, I think one of the things you were talking about with the church structure is that, you know, if, if let's imagine the body as, you know, as parts of the body. Okay. For so long, you may be a, a toe amongst a hand. And you feel so out of place and you don't understand why you don't fit because you don't fit because you're not in the right place. In the convergence, what God does is he brings alignment. He brings us aligning with the right people at the right time with the right work and assignments are given and different things are being spoken. So all of a sudden we find our place and that place is not a title or a position. It's a place in him, what we were created to be so that I can function. I can function next to you two and you can function next to me. And all of a sudden we see, wow, this is where I belong. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, I've never felt more settled in my place than after this weekend. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just confirmed of, of 
desires that had been in my heart that I said, Lord, I don't know where the place for this is, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, so much confirmation, so much yeah. peace. Yeah. yeah. I, I see it as is the, the order of God comes when the people gather together and yeah. um, God is, God is heard through all. He's trying to explain, help me if you have any words. Um, just the order of the, his order comes when we when we converge together when it's when it's just about him and it's about loving him and receiving his love then we're then we're able we actually have a love to give to each other we want to love each other and how does that just become just the natural gifts of the spirit just flow and through mm -hmm. that people are equipped people are strengthened and each one it receives a revelation of, wow, this is where God's taken me. Wow, this is where I fit. Wow, this is my strength here. Yeah, one thing I want to emphasize in what Jared said is that so many things happen naturally and organically. So that strengthening, that equipping, that unifying, all these things that um, sometimes we we put so much effort into. We we try to be unified. We try to equip each other. We try to love one another. Yeah. And um, that's beautiful. Our heart is in the right place. You know, we, we want all those things because those things are in God's heart. But um, this weekend, those things just happened so naturally that it was almost like we looked, we looked back at the weekend and we said, oh, my goodness, that happened and that happened and that happened. It wasn't something it wasn't an agenda we came in with. You know, our our agenda was only Jesus and it's Jesus the head. Right who joins all the ligaments and joints. I think that's the verse together. Yeah. And we grow with a growth that's from God. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a natural organic growth that we're not, you know, straining in our own effort to achieve. In, in, in your opinion, you know, let's say there's pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists watching this right now. Okay. And okay. Wonderful. This was just a time of worship. You're just worshiping the Lord and, you know, people are sharing, but where's the real meat? Where's the substance? Where's the teaching? Where is the stuff that, you know, that we typically look for when we go to a church service or to a conference where, you know, people laying hands on you, anointing and stuff like that. I think that, I think it's hard for them to grip, grip that in a convergence like this, you know, that God really does teach you. Psalm 32, 8 has been burning in me for, for, for a year now. I will, I, the Lord, will teach you and instruct you in the way that you should go and guide you with your own eyes. Can you guys share a little bit? Because I know even at the convergence, you said about, you mentioned some things about the teachings and, and about, and you, you became an instant scribe, Amber. Donna, <laughs> we got another scribe, Donna, we got another scribe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was a privilege to be the scribe because I was front row and center for what the Lord was teaching. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, yeah, I mean, I would say that as each as each member of the body shared their part, like I was saying earlier, there was there was a unified voice that you, you could start to see that kind of. I'm sure there's some kind of musical. I'm not musical, but just that background note that unifies every other note that started to come forth as all of the teaching was shared. And the beautiful thing about um, Henry's, Henry's role in that was that um, his, his intimacy with the Lord and his learnedness in, in the scripture and those sorts of things unified even more and solidified what the Lord was teaching us. So his part was so crucial in that, that, um, that he added um, you know, revelation at the right times to solidify and strengthen what God had already been showing the individual members of his body. So, um, yeah, even, uh, so to the, to the fivefold ministers, you know, that there, there's such a crucial role there to recognize the voice of God in the individual parts of the body to help them come together and help them see that unified voice. Like, I can't say it enough. My heart is just crying right now. Like, I need you. I need you. I need you. Like the, um, the transition from the, the church age to what we're talking about here is not any kind of 
um, disregard for what you bring to the table. In fact, I need you almost more in this context to equip and edify and lift up what the Lord is doing to, to just blow more with the wind of the spirit. So, um, yeah. And then also I would just like to, to mention that in that, as we're all sharing together and that unified um, voice started to come forth from the Lord himself, there's a substance that the Lord provides when the teaching is coming directly from him that I'm still being taught today, two, three days after the conference and, or I'm sorry, the convergence, um, that I'm still being taught and instructed and, and the things that he was teaching us are unfolding. So there's a substance, there's a living word that comes forth where we truly become living epistles. It's a transformational word that it's, it's, it's not a principle that I'm applying to my life. There's actually something on the inside of me that's living itself out of me. Wow. Now. Mm. Um, so, and I, I think I mentioned this in, in maybe another video, but um, in the church age, when we're being taught by a pastor at, at the front, it's, it's kind of like an indirect feeding a little bit that I'm receiving someone else's revelation. And um, that's beautiful. And just like Henry said, I'm indebted. I am, am so indebted to the pastors and teachers in my life um, who, have, who have sown into me in that way. I would not be here right now where I am with the Lord without that. Um, but being fed directly by the Lord so that it becomes a personal revelation. It's not what, you know, uh, Reverend Henry Joseph Falcone said, you know, I'm not parroting what he said. It's become my revelation because Jesus himself fed me his living word. And, and now I can feed it to others. That's the beautiful part because I'm, um, I'm hoping that that you'll most people will understand the difference between parroting what somebody says versus actually speaking something that's in you. Mm -hmm. there, there's a different power, there's a different substance that that comes forth that that can tran transfer that revelation now to other people. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, the 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 teaching that unified voice. It's directly from God. It hits your heart. It transforms your heart. Transforms your heart, and it becomes yours. It's it's now my revelation, Jared's revelation, everybody else who was there, and and nobody can take credit for that. It's only he gets all the glory in the midst of that. So yeah. that's that's the most beautiful part is that at the end of the day, yeah. God gets all the glory. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah, Jared. Yeah, so the teaching uh, this this time for me, the, the the greatest thing that I learned was is I think one of the most important things to be taught is how to hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so as we as we we came together and we we sought the Lord, we were able to try to explain this. Um, everything. As we came together, the Lord was was teaching us His voice, and mm. and um, I don't know I don't know how to expand upon that. Like how exactly. to recognize His voice? Yeah, recognize His voice. Like that, that's what we are learning. Like in the teaching, mm -hmm. like that is that is the teaching. Yeah, how to recognize His voice? Would would you say that then Henry's role? like edified that helped us to recognize where God was speaking. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, we definitely were taught in the word. Uh, yes. We had several different times where we broke it down and God revealed things in the word and where the revelation, you know, just like what Amber was saying, like the teaching actually becomes, become, become becoming one with the teaching. So, the, so the revelation is already hitting my heart. And then I can go back to my notes and I can expand upon that. I can see more mm -hmm. um, where in the past, uh, if I'm, if I'm listening the entire time I'm writing, I'm just trying to keep up trying to write notes. I don't have a lot of time to let it really hit my heart. Mm -hmm. But as mm -hmm. we're, as we're together, the teaching, I'm becoming one with the teaching. Um, 
but yeah, just just this last this last conversion, my first convergence coming mm-hmm. together, uh, being taught to hear the voice of the Lord. I think that's I think that ranks up there just as much as anything, honestly. And when I hear the voice of the Lord, um, then when I get in the Word, I can I can hear the Word better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I kind of summed up what you were saying. It becomes a living word. It's not just yes. a word of a teaching that was either, you know, through a man's intellect or a revelation brought into, you know, into to a way of 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 trying to teach like in like in a classroom. It becomes a living experience. The word became flesh, real within you. Yes. Scriptures yes. burned off the pages as God began to unfold it. And as you were getting a revelation from the Lord and Amber was getting a revelation from the Lord and Mary was and Lynn was and everyone there, it was like, wow. It, I mean, it burned. I felt like the two men on the road to Emmaus, didn't you? <laughs> yes. It, it, it didn't our heart burn within us as they expounded the scriptures? Mm-hmm. That's yes. what the convergence does. It allows the Lord to come and teach us with that burning word, that present word, that word that transforms you from the inside out. It's not. It's not a teaching at like when we like in the church age, which are wonderful. And I, I mean, we learn from them. It's like God is directly teaching us Himself. It's like He's coming with His finger and writing His <laughs> laws upon our heart. You know, yes. and, and when you read, like you're changed by that word. It becomes your life experience. The word becomes flesh within you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes. And um, just to testify too that in that today was kind of the first day that I wasn't catching up on sleep after the drive back to Texas, but I, um, t- I read the word for hours today. I was so hungry for the word of God. I was in the Old Testament. I was in the New Testament. I almost couldn't read fast enough to, to, uh, to satisfy the hunger that I had for the word of God. So um, even so just to testify there too that that the teaching that we received wasn't just prophetic revelation. You know, sometimes we can lean a little bit too far and only focus on prophetic revelation, but there was the word in the teaching that we received. And then that living word um, that that like Henry said started to burn within us, burned within me a hunger for more of the Bible, for more of every part of the Bible, not just the New Testament, not just the epistles. I was all over the place today. Um, so yeah, the, the word of God really came alive in a new way. Yeah. I believe that if there were others on tonight and maybe we'll do another one of these broadcasts soon, they would say and witness to the same thing. I know they are. And if you're on right now and you've been watching this and you came to Convergence, just put on the chat line. Yes, that's exactly right what they're saying. I experienced that. So they that they know that it's not just you two, but it was everyone that was there. I remember the last night we had some people come at the last meeting, but look what God did with, with with them i mean they i mean they were overwhelmed weren't they with the presence of yes. god and, and and they and they just felt like oh my god their their freedom that they could speak and i mean they just got up out of their chairs and began to speak and then they thanked you for your testimony and thanked others mm-hmm. and it was like wow god it was like yeah. unbelievable yeah and it's so beautiful too because there's no spiritual maturity requirement <laughs> you know we're we're members of the body and so there's no there's no qualification to enter into the presence of God. You, there's no, you have to be super spiritual or something. You know, we can do those weird, those weird requirements that we put on ourselves. Right. The Lord met every person where they were. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was, go ahead, Jared. Do you want to say something? Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm good. Yeah. Um, you know, I think what what was the dynamic is that when the Lord is welcomed and he's sought after, he is so ready to share his heart, mm. share his thoughts, share his plans. So many people got direction, instructions, assignments, blueprints. I mean, isn't this what we want when we gather together? Isn't this what should be happening? That people leave changed, meeting God, imparted to, trained, equipped you know, hearing together, working together, receiving blueprints and strategies for their life and their families. And, you know, and I think people got, I think people left there with even willing to be changed and to change everything that what they were doing. Would you agree? Oh yeah. Yeah. Total transformation. Uh, 
yeah, God did so much. It's hard for me to, to even start start listing it. I'm still I'm still processing it. <laughs> mm. um, I, I felt the the fear of the Lord in His presence uh, so much that it's just transforming me and mm. uh, just 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 burning me. It's still just burning me on the inside. Mm. Um, just being marked marked being marked by His Spirit. Mm. Have you ever been able to step up and share as much as you did at any other place as you guys did? Is, was this something you always do or was this something? <laughs> Tell us about no. that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, we know, especially him. He's, he's, um, he's not too ready to share typically. And so even him being here right now is a testimony to how the Lord changed him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I've dealt with the fear of man for a very long time mm. and I'm still coming out of it right now, but um, I feel like that got, that's maybe it's just my familiar thoughts, but I feel like that's been burnt off of me and mm. man, I was able to just share testimony and just, just uh, testify of what God was doing inside of me and amongst a group of people. Um, and I just, I just felt the presence, the presence of God on me and I was, I just entered into a new realm, a new realm of, of confidence in my father. Yes. And um, <laughs> just total transformation. Uh, I'm, I have yet to still see the fruit of, of more of what God's done. And, and that's not just me. I know that's in every single person that was there. Mm -hmm. You come together as a body of Christ, you will be transformed. There's, <laughs> um, it, it'd be pretty hard not to, not to be transformed out of that you're you're not just going to hear a teaching and say oh that was a good teaching no you're gonna you you met with the king of glory Ooh. oh lord <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and you you were changed by it i mean you guys taught as if you were seasoned veterans as you were sharing and so did gloria so did um michelle and you know and jeremy and adrian and lynn and mary and all those that came out i think when they spoke it was like you heard jesus you knew it was Jesus speaking in them. And it, like the boldness was incredible. The boldness yeah. that, that people were speaking in. I mean, pastors, this is what we've been dreaming for. Pastors, yeah. apostles, we've been hoping to see the body of Christ function. We've been we've been feeding them and feeding them and feeding them and feeding them. And you're saying, when are they going to get it? When are they going to rise up? But we have to understand the structure doesn't allow them to rise up. Mm -hmm. that, that structure that we have called services and conferences, it doesn't allow that to happen. Because there's just no room at the end. But in an environment like this, you're going to be amazed at the people that God has entrusted to. You're going to see them in such a new light, in such a new way. You're going to see their value. You're going to see their purpose. And all of a sudden, it's not going to be about the, that God sent them to help you build your ministry. Or God sent you to help you build the work or to take a city. You're seeing God sent them to me because they are precious and valuable. And they have a purpose and have a plan. And as you pour out your life for them, you know, and to get underneath them, to lift them up. Everything that God wants to do in that city will be done or that region, but not the way we're trying to make it happen. God is making it happen through his full-grown, maturing sons and daughters that are rising up who can function. I mean, the word for me is functionality. I don't know about that. That's what I see in this. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And when we come together, we're, we're not just one, but as we continue to, like, if the body, the body of Christ could completely... Uh, start coming together as one we all ascend the mountain of the lord together mm. not just one man or one woman and then and then leave, leaving a hand out to be hey come up here no we're going up together and those that there will be those that have a different grace in their life to to um speak uniquely into people's life to help them but but the thing is we're all coming up together we all we're all climbing we're all coming up to mount zion and that's that's where the transformation comes that's where the authority comes mm. in a in a larger uh, a larger um, group of the body of Christ, um, absolutely, uh, the the power and the presence of God will come so so profoundly. I, um, yeah, I lost the words at that point. But anything you want to add to that? Just yeah, to add to the to the um, when we ascend the mount the mountain together the. The authority and the and the plans and the blueprints, like Henry was talking about, the res, the instructions that we receive in that place directly from him, carry a power of 
breakthrough like I don't know that we've ever known before. We were praying this weekend and interceding for our families. Wow. And it was a really powerful time. I think, I mean, other people can testify to this, but I think everybody in the room knew that something happened, something changed, something shifted. That's how powerful it was. We, we, were, we had ascended the mountain together. We were interceding for our families in that place and God was moving. And Jared and I both um, I have testimonies today of things that happened in our families in a day. I mean, converse. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I won't go into all the details, but um, we both have testimonies of my mom, his mom, his dad, that things have shifted. Something has changed. And so the authority and the power that happens when, when we are up the mountain with the Lord and we have our ear tuned to his heart, the change and the shifts that are possible, the transformation of heaven truly coming to earth, the immediacy that we see things shifting. It's, it's, it's an entirely new, new ball game. <laughs> I mean, it's an entirely new level of power and authority because when we ascend the mountain, we're, we're completely and fully submitted to him and to one another. And in that place of submission, he can really move. So to add on to that coming together, I'm reminded of Genesis 11, uh, when they were building the Tower of Babel and God, God said that basically to sum it up that uh, we need to intervene here because there's nothing that they won't be able to do together. Well, just the inverse. That's what that's what God's calling us to to come together, co-labor together. And there will be nothing that we can do in the Lord's name when mm. we're all in union with him together. Mm. Yeah. Out of that, um, man. There's so much counseling that needs to be done in the church. I think that a lot of counseling would be taken, <laughs> significantly be chopped down mm -hmm. because people are mm -hmm. experiencing the King of Glory mm -hmm. and yeah. we can actually start building rather than dissecting. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, the anxiety I dealt with for years, like I was talking about the jealousy, that fear, I'm experiencing a freedom from those where I just felt like I was going head to head with those things on a daily basis. Mm. And I, I didn't, I didn't know how to experience the love of God that casts those things out. Right. And so, um, yeah, th there's, there's, there's such um, swift freedom in his love that there's mm. not that those years sure. of, of mucking through the mud that the world and the enemy has put on us because yeah. His love cleans you up real fast. <laughs> yeah. One second in the glory, right? One, One second, second in the glory. In the glory truly. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that's what you're saying is that because, uh, beloved, and, and again, I'm, I want to address my FIFO ministry friends, in the glory realm, and if we br allow that to come as we minister uh, uh, under David's tabernacle to the heart of the Lord, those things that uh, people have carried for years melt away. The melting power of God's glory removes, breaks the chains and the shackles. Nobody's laying hands on them. And most parts are, are doing God himself is coming in our midst and he's setting the captives free. He's healing the broken heart. He's bringing deliverance to the captives. He's opening up the present doors. He's giving the recovery of the sight to the blind in a way, in a dimension that's accelerated, powerful and instantaneously because he's preparing a people for this end time work that has to be done. And, and so by coming into that glory realm of God, into that function, all our needs are met. And then all the needs of the, of the people are met by God himself. And the testimony is God was here. Wow. <laughs> right. That was a testimony. It wasn't yes. how great pastor Henry was or flame of fire. It wasn't even a mention <laughs> of that. It was all mention of God, 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 God. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the other thing, too, is that, you know, and at the first convergence, you know, it was a little different dynamic because we had some we had some other musicians and singers. So it was a little bit easier for me, you know, to 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 step back a little bit, not, you know, and just kind of soak in with everybody. I had to do a little bit more doing most of the singing and the playing at this point. But, I, you know, and but, you know, that like what happens if somebody comes in or needs deliverance or 
or needs to uh, be ministered to. Does that mean we can't ever minister? Well, I would answer that question as a, as a five. Yes, you can. There was one point in, in the meeting, if you remember this, that, that, that we could feel something in the, in the atmosphere and it was not a good something in the atmosphere. And I think all of us became really uh, a, a, a aware of that. And I won't mention the details, but during that, the Holy Spirit just brought my attention to where the source of that was. And when I saw that that demonic manifestation happening, it broke my heart. And so now you say, how do you do do, do how do you deal with it? Would God just just deal with it right there? He can. But in this case, the Lord had me change my direction and begin to sing to this individual and sing prophetically to them. You know, and then all of a sudden, as I was singing a song of deliverance, God was having me sing a song to them. And then he had me specifically aim it at that person, you know, and then I invited that person and said, do you want to come? Do you want to give your life to the Lord? Do you want to be free? And that that person came and he came right up there. And you see, so I, I I want to share. Listen, there is still a practical ministry that can be done and God will use you. That's something that God said, Henry, it's OK. Go ahead and do it because I don't want to. I want the Lord to be seen. You know, that's the exact opposite of back in the day. We want to pray over everybody, do everything. Now I'm saying, look, no, I don't want to do anything. And Lord said, no, 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 you can you know, because it's not you, it's me. And, you know, and, and as he brought him up, Jerry, you came up and we prayed together, you know, over this individual and, you know, and man, the love for this person, right, brother, the love, you know, it, it, how did you feel about that? Uh, it, it was just, uh, just feeling the, the sensitivity of the moment there. Mm -hmm. and, and God so wanted to, uh, to meet, to, to, to meet them in his love um it, it was it just it was such a sacred sacred time of mm -hmm. of the lord um revealing his heart for that individual yeah it was and really as you watch the lord reveal his heart to other people then it enhances it enhances everyone's understanding of the lord's right. sensitivity to each right. one yeah yeah and, and you would interrupt the meeting yeah just for that individual mm -hmm. That spoke volumes of God's heart for us. Yeah. And you were very sensitive, especially to the young people. And, you know, uh, Jerry came up to me and said, listen, I think I have something for this, this young man that was there as well. And I said, yeah, go ahead and bring it to him. And you were the right person at the right time to bring the right message to this young man. Now, if we weren't in this environment, that may have never happened. And a change wouldn't have come. But each one of these little things as God would send us, and it wasn't often that we were actually ministering one to another in that manner, but there was times where it was absolutely necessary. And that was the beauty about this. Where God was working himself, he was, but there was times he needed to use us and work through us to minister to each other in ways like that. And so when you minister to that young man, it just broke something off open. And that opened up for us to go over to the other older man in the back later. And if you remember, I mean, this time the Lord just brought him up and he said, you have no idea of what you just said. I said, you're right. I have no idea what you just said. He said, this is word. And he was broken, wasn't he? And broken at the altar because you see, the Lord would still use us. So for those pastors and ministers, and you know, there's still a ministry dynamic. It's just lessened and targeted. We targeted, targeted, targeted. Yeah, yeah, it's so critical that the the fivefold ministry is is there for God's government to to reign as we come together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, there is the the importance of the fivefold ministry becomes so much more critical uh, as we converge together. Yeah. Um, I'm like I said earlier, as as a as a calling as a fivefold minister us both of us we're really excited to see um see the lord move through our lives and uh, see just the so such unique and amazing opportunities to use be used by god in ways that we never even imagined um outside of just the traditional structure which mm -hmm. personally for both of us for a long time was just not appealing to us, but we knew that we had a call to the fivefold ministry. And after seeing us come together, it's so beautiful. It's, it's so, so, I'm so excited to, to be an encouragement in, in the Lord's hands and however, which way he wants to use me. I'm just so excited to see him move um, through us, through everybody. And um, yeah, the fivefold ministry, um, 
it's not going anywhere. It's only increasing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think w one of the beautiful parts for me is that, you know, we are right alongside of the body, not over them. And that in the old sense of it, here's my teaching, go do it. But we're right next to it, laboring together. No big people, no li little people. And that gift that God gives me works. And it works even more strategically and more targeted because for example, I'll, I'll use Gloria for, 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 for example. I mean, I mean, she oftentimes goes into tears. Okay. But those tears are breakers. You know, they're a breaker anointing, you know, and, and, and then and if you remember when, when uh, sister um, Yolanda said, I just feel like I got to pray over the nations. And she went and she put her hands over the nation and man, boy, did we feel a prayer for the nation. And, and I think after that, after that prayer time, I think you stayed after uh, uh, you lingered right for a while. I don't know if it was before that or after that, but you just stayed there and you were crying out for the nations and the church. Where'd that come from? <laughs> where are you asking me where that came yeah, from? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the spirit of God just, I couldn't, I couldn't not, I couldn't not enter into what he was inviting me into. I mean, I felt his heart to set people free and I felt so privileged that he was inviting me to serve him in that way, to, to, to be a part of setting the captives free. I mean, to, to pray and it was, it was such an, a powerful encounter. And I would like to mention too, that in, in that time when I was lingering before the Lord, Henry recognized what a holy moment I was having in having with Jesus himself. And he protected and covered me in that, that there wouldn't be any interference. And I felt so much love in that way and so much protection and care from him as a shepherd of the room, you know, that he would recognize where I was with the Lord and, and recognize the importance of um, the crying out, the intercession, the, the declaration, all of those things that um, that he covered me in that. And so I just want to mention that too, is how important and how cared for I felt because of that. Because I mean, if something would have disrupted what I was experiencing with him, I would have been absolutely devastated, absolutely devastated. That's a great point. That was so holy. Matter of fact, what the Lord did with us that stayed was join with you. I mean, I had, I, I had to take the flags. Jerry was in the back. I think the sisters were praying and I had to take the flags. And I felt like you, what you were doing was cleaning out the atmosphere over Colorado. And so the wow. Lord had me wave them and, and, and move the, move the flags back and forth. I don't, I'm not a flag minister, you know what I'm saying? So I, mean, I just grabbed what the Lord said and I started waving them as the Lord was saying, and I, I had to go over all the cheers and I knew we were breaking through, you know, for that, which was to come. Now, if, if, you know, if I had just left and left the room or, you know, that other, you might've been interrupted. You might've be even been tempted to leave because there's no one there, you know, but see, yeah. that was so holy and so discerning that these are the things that we can teach and impart to the body of Christ about these very, why was it so important that Joshua lingered in the presence of the Lord? Well, now you understand how that lingering prepared him for leadership. Without the lingering, there's no leadership because he lingered yeah. in that place where Moses was. Wow. And and I, and I think I shared with you, I said, you were cleaning out the atmosphere. You were making a way with that, with that heart's cry. And that as fivefold ministers, that's where we learn the body parts and we see their function, you know? And so when I look at Gloria and I look at you and I look at, at, at Jared and all those that was there, I now have a deeper understanding of your calling. I have a deeper wow. understanding of your purpose so that when, if we were to come back and do this and go into it, at which we are, and then go and then, and then maybe pray in different regions. Now I know the gifting that you are and what God has used you with. And now, now we can recognize and say, listen, would you be willing to come here? What do you think? And you say, yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> right. And, and now we can function because now that you're not just a group of people sitting in front of me. You know, and, and, maybe, and maybe you're going to sign up for a ministry. Maybe you'll be, uh, you know, doing in charge of the chicken dinners or the outreach to the community or this. No, I get to see you as God sees you. I get to know you as a five minutes the way God sees you. And now I have a much deeper understanding, you know, uh, of your calling. And now I can pray and say, God, how do I get underneath them as a minister? Mm -hmm. How do I get underneath them? How do I lift them up? How do I help them become everything that God this to be, you know, I haven't asked anybody to join Flame of Fire Ministry, and you're not going to hear me do that. That's by God's design. But in that, you know, because it's not about joining the ministry, it's about fitting, it's about knitting, but it's about 
pouring your life out and that 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 gift that God has given you as a fire minister for, for those that are that are there and you see them, you can hear them and you know them and you know them by the spirit. And you can begin to trust them. And pastors and leaders, we don't have to be so fearful that they're going to be ready to want to take over the church or take over the ministry, accomplish the strife. No, they're not a threat. They're a blessing. Yeah, yeah and I would just add to that, too, to um, in the way that Henry was functioning during, during the time, especially in that covering and that shepherding of the room that I saw so often, I mean my respect for his position increases because I know that I can only be in my place when he's fulfilling that role, you know, under me and around. And, and there's such a deep, deep honor that happens in the heart when, when, um, you know, I am seeing a fivefold minister function in the way that they were designed to function. There's just a deep honor that is produced in my heart that, um, produces almost a deeper submission because there's such a deep trust because of that love for for who God made me. I know he sees me as God sees me and so I can I can submit to that without fear because I know that he's seeing me accurately. You know, I want to add something to that too. Um I think it's in the traditional structure church structure um Sometimes you, you, your access is really limited to the, the leaders of the church. And um, just like Amber was talking about the submission, you, gr you grow in like this deep desire to want to submit to your, to your leaders. And I really feel that God, um, God wanted the, the, the leaders and the, the body to, to converge together, to, to be uh, very connected, to be, hey, we're seeking the Lord together. There's no... There's no uh, major gap between us. Uh, we're, we're we're just we're just coming together, and uh, it's, it's kind of just like in the military. You, you're you're your leaders. You're walking right right alongside them. You know they're not they're not way 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 out of. I haven't been in the military, so I don't know exactly, but I know that the the, the leaders they do walk with the the privates and you know gather together. Um, they're mm -hmm. not. Um, off somewhere else doing something yeah, else. You're, yeah, you're right there hand in hand, uh, having conversation, uh, converging together with God. You know, our leadership as FIFO Ministries is, is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is yeah. him in us. It's his fatherly love. It's his apostleship. It's his prof prophetic. It's his evangelistic. It's his teacher. It's his pastoral. And so what we should be a reflection of is the Lord so that you feel his love, his covering, you know, and yes, God uses men. And, you know, that's why he gave gifts, he gave gifts to men, you know, they're, they're there. But in this, you're not worshiping the gift. You're not worshiping the position, the title. What, 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 as my spiritual father told me when I think I shared this at the meeting, if I have something worth submitting to, you'll submit to it without demanding it, without demanding, you need to submit to me. I'm your spiritual father and blah, 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 blah. There's none of that because it's pure love. It's the love of God in that individual. And believe me, I'm still being worked on like everybody else. I'm, I'm not anywhere near anywhere. Let me just tell you that right now. I'm still, I'm one of you and we're, you're, we're, we're in this together. We're all being changed from glory to glory. I still have stuff that God has to work in me. And then you've heard me say that over and over because I don't want anybody to, 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 you know, to, to see me wrongly. I'm just one of many, but in that gifting, as we grow to know the Lord and be filled with the love of the Lord, that leader that Jesus is, that uplifter that Jesus is, that uplifter that the Holy Spirit is able to function through you, surround cover, nurture, you know, without demanding, you know, uh, submission, without demanding obedience, it becomes an obedience and submission out of absolute love. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. Absolute love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the beautiful part of this, for my FIFO minister friends, I can submit to the Lord in them. I can hear God in them. And they can speak into my life just as anyone else comes. And so if they say something and they hear something from the Lord, I'm not just going to brush that off because I know they know the Lord. And if and, and I know if they're praying for me and they truly love me in the Lord, they're going to hear from me. They're going to help me see. And so I don't have to do it all myself. Like so many ministers have to do everything just about on their own without 
you know, without the body surrounding them, because we're just part of the family like anybody else is. But so often we kind of put the, the, the ministers outside of the camp, so to speak, you know what I'm saying? And the, there's us, and there's them, there's this hierarchy in them instead of, no, that's my family. Though he may be an apostle, that's my family. The, that, that prophet, he's my family. And seeing them and loving them and functioning with them as part of the family, then you begin to see their needs. And boy, five ministers, what would it be like when the five, when the rest of the body sees your needs? How many ministers are never ministered to? How many ever get a word from the people? How many ever get built up by the people that they're ministering? It's usually one way, one way, one way, one way, one way, because the structure makes it that way. But in this, glory to God, everyone can build it. You're going to see my needs. And you know what? And, and that's where, uh, as a minister, you hope that, you know, like Paul, like the Church of Philippi, they, they said they not only ministered once, but they ministered twice. And it said, and they opened a, 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 a partner, a covenant relationship together. You know, they entered into this covenant love bond with the Lord. And boy, what a beautiful, beautiful picture. And I'm really trying to address some of the fightful ministers of, of being loved, not demanding love, not hoping to be loved. But there's a love that wants to pour back into your life as you poured back into them without any strings attached. I'm not doing this so I can get a position or a place because I've I, I dealt with all that over the years. There's always somebody that wants to be your right hand man. And God removed every single one of them every single time, even though as I pick, God removed. I stopped picking a long time ago. Lord, you have to do this. <laughs> you know, because I mean, there are people with flattering tongues. They they tell you everything you want to hear. You know, to build you up. You know, so they can gain an influence. Not in this place. Not no way. I, I think they would drop dead, honestly, if they even tried to do that in that glory realm. Yeah. Yeah. So so there so there is a, a ministry back, a strengthening from from. You know, I think the greatest joy as a parent is when your children pour back into you. <laughs> wow. When they have something, you know, when they say, dad, let me pay for dinner. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. Or they just want to be around you and near you because you have something, mm -hmm. you know, instead of saying, dad, can I have $10? Can I have the keys to the car? There's something beautiful when your children grow up to be men and women and you see them different. You don't treat them as children anymore. And I'm, you know, we're going to wrap up here shortly, but you know, the, the thing is, is that I don't have to look over the people and say, listen, I need to feed you. 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 And that's what we've done in the church age. You know, constantly being fed, but by the time you ought to be teachers, what happened? You know, I would you agree in this environment you grow and you can function and you mature, you know, and so you you know, and it's like, wow, you know, I can relate to each other, you know, even to an apostle or prophet or teacher on a level the same in the Lord, not disrespecting the gift of office, but it's no less, right? Would you agree? Yeah, yes. Yeah, absolutely. We're 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 all children of God. Um, there's there's no class difference. Mm -hmm. We're all in the we're all in the class of God's as God's sons and daughters, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and we're just all meant to be in relationship with one another. Um, a mutual, yeah, it's a mutual love, right? A mutual respect and a yeah. mutual honor, no matter who it is. Yes, yeah. and and the. There's no place that removes um, removes your ability to be a person, you know. Like I think that's that's kind of in the church age structure. Maybe what being a pastor in that position has done to the pastor is it's removed your ability to be a human being. Like that you're still a human. You still have needs. You still have areas that you need to be covered. You still have areas and. Um, in this atmosphere, we all get to be human beings without that weakness being taken advantage of. And I think maybe sometimes that's a fear of like why a pastor wouldn't want to open up that humanity like to his congregation because there's that fear of being taken advantage of in some, house, in some way. But in this atmosphere, that mutual respect and, and once again, that pure holy love of God all we want to do is cover. All we want to do is fill. All we want to do is edify one another and encourage. Mm -hmm. And that transparency and vulnerability um, is something that draws us to each other again instead of separates us. It becomes, there's, like I was saying earlier, a deeper respect, a deeper love, a deeper desire to cover those things that maybe um, in the church structure would be used to expose and degrade and disrespect. Wow. 
the pure holy love of God does not leave room for that. Like Henry said, I mean, in this atmosphere, I don't know what God would do, but he would not allow that. He would not allow that. Um, he would not allow a, a leader exposing their humanity to be disrespected in that place. Mm. And so there, he, there's so much protection in him. He shields us in love. And then we get to become part of that shielding as a body of one another. It's so beautiful. It's what it's what we've longed for. I mean, mm. it's it's what we've longed for. And again, just to reiterate what I said earlier, that isn't a striving thing. I'm not striving to try to cover someone. It happens naturally in the love of God, mm. in that in that in that in the way that we're gathering. Yeah. And to add to that. Um, as we got to to seek the Lord together, uh, Pastor Henry, we, you know, I, I was just compelled. I just felt this compelling love in my heart to, man, I just, I just want to, I just this love for you and seeing your humility before the Lord. It just made me want to just drop everything that I could. And what can I do to bless you? What can I do to be an encouragement to you? What can I do to help you in anything? And and yeah, I really do believe that God desires that, that there's a mutual relationship, that there's a you're giving to me and I'm giving to you. And, it, and it's a reception. And just like God's love, he gives to us. But yet uh, he wants us to give to him as well, our love. Yeah. So that that exchange all across the table, I, mm -hmm. I think that's healthy. That's that's family. It's a real family. And the beautiful part of that, as what you were both saying to me, is that this is what we've longed for. This is what we have cried for, the yeah. true love of God to be yeah. seen and known. And all of us being one family of God, you know, and yet still respect the positions and the order that God has of, of rank in, in some areas, you know, not in from a rank like, like you know, like, you know, you lord over them, but a rank of, of authority, which are different with, with each person. But we recognize it and we love it and we cherish it, you know, and it's not like you said, there's no jealousy, there's no competition. And, and I think what it does is that it breaks down the walls. It breaks down the division. It breaks down the separation and it allows us to see each other. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when people were sharing their hearts, I mean, I was crying my eyes out, <laughs> weren't you? I mean, yeah. the hurts that they were being healed from, what they went through. I mean, we were mourning with those that were mourning and rejoicing with those that were rejoicing. Mm -hmm. It was like my heart was hurt. Their heart was hurting. My heart was broken, you know what I'm saying? And I think yours were too. And we were crying for each other, weeping for each other, praying for each other. Each other. We weren't just sitting there listening to a message, you know, and, and taking good notes. We were vulnerable, exposed seen yes. in the love of God. And God says, yeah, you're healed to bind up each other's wounds. I'm here with you. And I, you know, and I mean, I, I, the people, what they were sharing, I said, oh my God, you know, it's like, oh Lord, you know, my heart broke and yours did. And what did you want to do? Just Lord heal them. But, and, and he did. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was so beautiful. So powerful. You know, I, I'd like to do another one of these, um, you know, uh, again, you know, maybe I don't know if we can do when the next time is. And, and those of you that are interested, what I'd like to share the next time is about the dynamic of the, the music in worship and about mm -hmm. the creating of the atmosphere and what the Lord did in the music. You know, and how he brought us, and you know, we were like you were just sitting. You just came and you just sat, and you know, it's like there's something about that ministry to the Lord, that psalmist ministry of the Lord of finding His heart, that is so critical. Which I think without it, none of this could happen. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? With without that, you know, how do you? If no. we can't reach God's heart, we're never going to get to this place. No, nope. you're yeah. right. You're definitely right. Yeah, it's it's like you you told us the the destination is his heart. There, mm -hmm. There's no other destination, and and as we as we uh, are in are in his heart, you know that's where that's where the fruit is. That's where the work of God happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, we have to we have to touch his heart. We have to be in sync with his heart, mm -hmm. and and that happens in us pouring our love on him. And that's. And the psalmist, just like David did, as he as he loved God, God moved closer to him. And mm. and that's the real secret of mm. yeah, we act, the, act, the the love language must be uh, must be spoken. 
Mm. Yeah. The psalmist mystery woos the heart of God. Mm. And there are many psalmists in the church and many musicians and singers that are longing to get out of the can, you know, the can to worship. They want to express that love in their heart, the singers, the musicians, the dancers. But because of what we had for all these years, there's just not, again, there's not a room for, or, or is there any teaching really, except if you go to like a 24 hour prayer place or something where you'll see some of that, but in the larger realm of the body of Christ, that is very little experienced or even valued yet or seen the need for. So we're going to have to talk about that a little bit more and, and, and really be able to encourage those singers and musicians. There is a place for you. There is a place for you. Don't be discouraged. You, you know, the singing, the, 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 you know, the scribes, the prophetic, the handmaid. We learned about the handmaidens and the men servants, about what, what their role is, how they pour their heart out of the Lord, you know, right at that altar place and how God comes. Can mm -hmm. you imagine my faithful ministered br brethren and sisters and those of you out there when all of those pieces are functioning to the true ministry of the heart of God, what's going to happen in a city or in a region? Oh, my, 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 my. I'm getting <laughs> all over me. God's yeah. going to do it. Oh, my gosh. He will, he will move in ways we all dream of. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's the center of everything. The songs are for him. The worship's for him. You know, the, the ministry of flags is for everything is for him. And as he receives our part, we feed him our part. Then he comes and he feeds us in a miraculous way. And praise God. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Any last words to anybody about convergences or what you've learned from, from them? Or want to wrap us up tonight? Hmm. Well, the, just the one thing that I had been thinking about today was um, the way that the Lord prepared me to come mm -hmm. to to this convergence. And he the thing as I was journaling that came to the surface was just a frustration and agitation in, in my heart and in my spirit. And um, here's here's a credit to a teaching from from a church that I went to a while back about how frustration is our friend. And frustration actually reveals the hunger in our hearts and the desire in our spirits for the more of God and for where God is leading us next. So I just wanted to speak that as an encouragement to anyone who's just maybe feeling frustrated, agitated. Maybe you're a pastor in a church who just has this underlying frustration about why things aren't happening in your congregation or, or, or maybe you're another kind of minister and, and you're just not seeing the fruit that you want to see in the people's lives that you're ministering to, or maybe you're a congregant in the church and you're, you're like me, you're frustrated because where's my place, God, or, or you're frustrated, um, you know, because you want more of God, but you don't know how to find it or, or just any of those frustrations. I just want to encourage you that, that, um, to consider that maybe that's the voice of God speaking to you. Maybe it's maybe it's not a frustration that you need to push aside and just kind of stamp down and say, you know, I'm just crazy. I'm this is, you know, this is the way things are. I just need to keep it like this. I would encourage you again to just consider that that frustration is the voice of God speaking to you in your hunger to seek out the more for him. So maybe that looks like coming to a convergence Maybe that looks like trying something new in, in your church. I mean, I, I don't know what it is. You know, he has all those blueprints and instructions, but I just wanted to encourage you because when I was frustrated, I was just frustrated because I didn't understand why I was frustrated and being frustrated is frustrating. But when you <laughs> understand that it's the leading of God, that he's calling you, he's inviting you into something more, it changes everything because then you can respond you can respond to, to that call. So that's the last thing I wanted to say. Okay. Amen. Jerry. Uh, last thing I would say is that before I came to this convergence, uh, seeking the Lord was, uh, it was kind of this mysterious thing. And I, I would find him in, in, in some ways, uh, but not in the fullness that I desire. And I still desire to find him even more. I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm content, but I'm, but I'm not satisfied. Mm -hmm. I want him more and more, 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 more. I want him more. And, mm -hmm. but what's so 
awesome about coming together is that we seek him together. And so I'm leaning on my brother and leaning on my sister. And I'm, it's not just me seeking God. I'm we're, we're seeking him together. And so I'm learning to seek him. And so now after I've come back from that convergence, I am equipped. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's part of the equipping of, uh, that Paul talked about in Ephesians 4 is that for the equipping of the saints is being equipped to seek our God. Wow. And so I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm I'm enjoying seeking him. And, and when the battle really comes, when the enemy really wants to, to bring it against me, I God has taught me through this of how to find him. How to find him when the when the wind shifts and the enemy wants to throw me a curveball. Uh, I know how to find my father. I know how to I know how to seek his space. Mm. So if that's anybody there that's heard words before, like oh man, like you know we must seek the face of God and uh, for for what is coming. Uh, and and you're just there's some fear there. There's some uncertainty there. Uh, Come together with your brothers and sisters and seek him. Mm. Um, yeah. and, and a tribute to the fivefold ministry is when the fivefold ministry is there, there's a there's a very profound special grace there to to edify us and, and direct us and how how to seek God. And so mm. we will learn how to seek him. So yeah. there's just so much support mm. coming together. Um, it doesn't need to be scary. Um, Cause that's how I felt. It was scary. You seek God and you kind of hit a wall and, and then you just kind of, you start to maybe just start to get in the word and then you just kind of feel like, yeah, I'm seeking God, you know, I'm seeking God, but hmm. you will, you will realize that there's so much more, there's so much more to, uh, of seeking him that you will be equipped to do. So I just want to encourage anybody with that. There's, Amen. Let, let go of that fear and and come together with your brothers and sisters. And he's so faithful to show up. Mm. Yeah. I, I think we, we are fulfilling Paul's prayer in Ephesians 3 that we might experience the height, the depth, the width, and the breadth of God's love being rooted in that love, securely founded. And to know that love, which by experience, which far surpasses intellectual knowledge of it. You know, and to, to him who can do exceedingly above all that we can think or ask. I watch you guys transform before my eyes and everybody there. And I hope the others will be able to join us next time too, so yes. they can say they're part of the testimony as well. Because I think, you know, it really was a body wide experience together. You know, and so what you're sharing is what everybody shared in just in different ways and different experiences. And so we'll do this again shortly. And uh, we're going to be having another convergence in August you know, um, August 6th uh, through the 11th, you know, I'll be sending some uh, details out shortly on my Facebook page to let you know about it. Cause this one is going to take us even to another level and another work, which I'll share shortly. So if those of you uh, who are thinking about wanting to come mark down our August 6th through the 11th, set it apart, you know, a time I'll tell you when and where shortly, you know, so put those dates down. You might need a day of travel before and after. So plan a little ahead of time. And um, this one is another strategic and we're going to meet the Lord of hosts there. We're going to meet him as the Lord of hosts in this place. So um, thank you, Jared. And thank you, Amber, for sharing tonight. And to all of all of you um, that are watching uh, and, and Lynn just put it up on the screen, which, OK, so I guess she put up the details on me there. OK, <laughs> I was holding that, Lynn, but that's OK. <laughs> but she, but she, <laughs> she's Johnny on the spot there. Yeah. So anyways, we, it will be, uh, so that now that's on, it, it will be at that place that you can see on the chat line there and, uh, and we will give you more details about it. But thank you for sharing tonight and thank you all of you. And those of you who prayed that are watching, I hope you see the fruit of your prayers. Look at what you helped for us. We could not have done this without the Lord and without you. You have prayed for us and look at the fruit. This is all to your word. And those of you that sowed, excuse me, that blessed us financially to get there, look at the fruit of your giving. These, these precious couple's lives were changed and all of us were. This goes to your account. So your blessing, see, your blessing gifts were real blessings and they're multiplying. And thank you so much for your faithfulness. Those of you that so uh, given those blessings, I don't want to say so anymore because we're not there anymore, you know, but, but that gave those blessings a prayer and finances. Uh, you're going to reap a hundredfold. 
So thank you, everyone. Amber and Jerry, thank you for sharing tonight. Yeah, and, thank you, Henry. Amen. I'm going to give you a call. In, I want to give you a call in a second. Okay. I just want to share one quick thing with you. So I'll give you a call after I'm done here. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right. okay. You. Thank you. God bless everybody. God bless. Jesus loves you. Bye. Good night, everyone. We love you and Jesus loves you. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye-bye. <laughs>